In today's episode, I will show you how to make an RFID student's attendance system with an SMS alert. In this tutorial, you will learn how to design your own graphical user interface application in Visual Basic. Before we start working on this project, first let me show you how this project actually works. First of all, a teacher swipes a card and is marked present. Then the timer is started and messages are sent to the students that the teacher has arrived. If the students swipe their cards within specified time, they will be marked present. And the rest of the students will be marked absent. And messages will be sent to their parents. So let's get started. The components that we will be needing for this project are number one GSM SIM 900A or SIM 900T. I will be using SIM 900A. Number two Arduino Uno. Number three four RFID takes. Number four MFRC 522 RFID module. Number five power supply for GSM module. The Amazon purchase links are provided in the description. This is the GSM module and market. We have different types of GSM modules. The one I'll be using today is SIM 900A. If you want, you can also use SIM 900D. The same code is also tested using SIM 900D, but with a different baud rate. The rest of the programming remains the same. If you're from Pakistan or India, make sure you purchase the unlocked version of the SIM 900A. This GSM SIM 900A module, as you can see on the screen, has no onboard voltage regulator. So be careful while applying the voltage. Ideal voltages for this GSM module is 4.7 volts, but you can also connect it with 5 volt regulator. If you don't have a 5 volt adopter, then you can make your own supply using LM3170 adjustable or variable voltage regulator. I have a very detailed tutorial on LM3170 explaining everything, so do watch this tutorial. As you can see in this picture, we have so many pins which are labeled, but we will be using only 5 of these pins, the power supply pins, ground, RXT 5V and TXT 5V. The ground will be connected with the Arduino's ground, TXT will be connected with the Arduino pin 2 and RXT will be connected with the Arduino pin 4. This is the MFRC522 RFID module that we will be using today. RFID means a radio frequency identification. RFID uses electromagnetic fields to transfer data over short distances. So first of all, let's start with its spinouts. The first pin is the VCC and this will be connected with 3.3 volt of the Arduino. Pin number 2 is the RST or Reset. Pin number 3 is the ground, while the MISO pin, MOSI pin, SCK pin and NSS pin. These four pins are the SPI pins and will be connected with the Arduino SPI pins. In Arduino the SPI pins are pin number 13 is the SCK, pin number 12 is the MISO, pin number 11 is the MOSI and pin number 10 is the SS. Why the last pin IRQ is not used? The interfacing is really easy as this module has male header pins so we can use male to female type jumper wires to connect RFID module with Arduino. As you can see I have already connected 7 jumper wires. Now let's connect these jumper wires with Arduino. First of all connect the VCC of the RFID module with 3.3 volt of the Arduino. Now connect the reset pin of the RFID module with pin number 9 of the Arduino. Now connect the ground pin of the RFID module with the ground of the Arduino. Now connect the MISO pin of the RFID module with pin 12 of the Arduino. Now 
Now connect the MOSI pin of the RFID module with pin 11 of the Arduino. Now connect the SCK pin of the RFID module with pin 13 of the Arduino. And now finally connect the NSS pin of the RFID module with pin 10 of the Arduino. So that's it. The interfacing is completed. As you know my friends, GSM-900A module communicates with Arduino using serial communication. So that's why we have to define pins for the TX and RX pins of the GSM module. Well, you also know that Arduino has a serial port which is on pin number 0 and pin number 1. The Arduino's default serial port will be used for the communication between the graphical user interface application and Arduino. Now the question is, if we are using the Arduino's default serial port for the communication between the computer and Arduino, then how will we connect the GSM module? Well, no worries at all, we can define multiple serial ports using the software serial library, which I will explain in the programming. As you can see in the connection diagram, TX of the SIM900A is connected with pin 2 of the Arduino and RX of the SIM900A is connected with pin 4 of the Arduino and ground is connected with the Arduino's ground. A power supply is connected with SIM900A, ideal voltage is 4.7V to 5V, while the RFID module connections I already explained. This is the program written for finding the identity numbers or the RFID takes before you can control anything using RFID system. First you need to find out the identity numbers of each take and then you can use that identity number to identify an RFID take to control anything you want. I will provide a link in the description from where you can download this code. The RFID module communicates with the controller using SPI bus. In Arduino and Mega, the SPI pins are different. If you are using Arduino, then connect pins in the same way as I connected. But if you want to use Mega, then connect RST with pin 5, SS with pin 53, MOSI with pin number 51, MISO with pin number 50, and SCK with pin number 52. Before you start the programming, first of all, make sure that you download these two libraries. You can download these libraries from GitHub. After you download the necessary folders, then simply copy and paste them into the Arduino's library folder. As you can see, I already downloaded these two libraries. So now, as you can see, this is a small program written to find the identity number of takes. You can find this code in the MFRC522 examples folder or you can copy this code from my blog page, link given in the description. Let's upload this code by clicking on the upload button and wait for a while. I have these four RFID takes so first of all let's find its identity numbers. Now click on the serial monitor. Find the identity numbers of all the takes and save them in a file. The RFID module connections with the Arduino remains uh, the same. L, M, N are the commands uh, when the controller receives any of these commands a message will be sent to the parents of that student. A, B and C commands are used to let the students know that the teacher has arrived. I already explained these two libraries hash include spi.h and hash include mfrc522.h. 
The software serial library is used for making multiple ports hash into the software serial dot h. Software serial SEM 900 2 and 4. The GSM module is connected with pin 2 and pin 4 of the Arduino. String text for SMS. This is a variable of the type string and this will be used for storing the text messages. Hash define SS underscore pin 10. The SS pin is connected with pin 10 of the Arduino. Hash define RST underscore pin 9. The reset pin is connected with pin 9 of the Arduino. This function creates the MFRC522 instance. Every Arduino and Mega program has at least two functions which are the wide setup function and wide loop function. Wide means that these functions are not returning any values and the empty parentheses means that these functions are not, not taking any arguments as the input. Serial.begin9600. This instruction simply initializes serial communication with the PC. This is a built-in function. Sim900.begin19200, which is the baud rate of the GSM module. Well, if you are using Sim900D, this baud rate can be different. SPI.begin, which initializes the SPI bus. MFRC five double two dot PCD underscore init function init the MFRC five double two car. Random seed analog read a zero. This is the analog pin A zero of the Arduino and is used with the GSM module. Then there is a delay of five thousand milliseconds, which is equal to five seconds. Then starts a while loop function. If serial dot available equals equal zero. This is an if condition and it means that if no data or command is received from the computer, then simply keep executing the instructions enclosed in these brackets. The purpose of this block of code is to read the RFID cards. If it is a valid RFID card, then sends a command to the computer application. If the teacher card is detected, then a message a teacher is sent to the computer application and similarly if a student card is detected, then a STU1, STU2 and STU3 messages are sent to the computer application. Commands from graphical user interface application. If serial dot available greater than zero, if the controller has received a message from computer, character data is equal to serial dot read. Read the data and store it in a variable data. Then there is a delay of one second. Messages to the students that the teacher has arrived. If data equals equals a. If the received character is A, then a message will be sent to the first student. If we have received B, then a message will be sent to the second student and so on. The programming is exactly the same, only the student names are changed and the send SMS function numbers. Messages to their parents uh, to let them know that their son or daughter is absent. These are exactly the same as the above with the only difference in string messages. User defined functions for sending messages to students and parents. Messages to students. All the functions are exactly the same, only the mobile numbers are different as we will be sending messages to different students and their parents. If you compare these functions, you will find that only the function names are different and the cell phone numbers are different. The rest of the functions I've already explained in my previous tutorials as I have posted so many tutorials on GSM. So now we are done with the programming. Now we'll start the application designing. Open Visual Basic 6 and make sure Standard XZ is selected and click Open. Now add two text boxes. Delete the text. Select the vertical type scroll bars and set multi-line to true.
now eight check boxes Select a check box and change the caption to teacher. Now select another check box and write student one and so on. Now let's add the remaining components and then we will arrange them. Let me show you how to change the label caption and font size. Now let's add timers. To add a COM port, right click and select components and then select Microsoft Common Control 6.0. Click apply and then click close. Double click to add the COM port. Now that all the components are added, I will be back after rearranging all the components and setting their names. As you can see all the components are arranged, the check 3 will be used for the teacher, check 4, check 5 and check 6 will be used for the students. The timing label will show the total time in seconds. This label will show the current system time. Over here seconds will be displayed. And on another label you can display minutes. Check 8, check 9 and check box 10 will be used for sending messages to students that teacher has arrived. When checkbox 12 is checked, it means that a message is all sent to all students. Checkboxes 13 to 15 are used to send messages to students' parents if in case they are absent. This is a text box and its name is changed to TXT Receive. All the messages from the Arduino will be received in this text box while this text box is not used for now. Timer number 1, 2 and 3 are set to true and the interval is set to 1000 milliseconds while timer 4 is set to false and the interval is 1000 milliseconds. Now let's discuss the programming. We start by typing option explicit. This is where we define our variables. Dim buffers. This is not used in this project but I will use this in upcoming tutorials. Private declare subsleep lib which is a library kernel 32 by value dw milliseconds as long. This is used for delays. Then some variables of the type integer and string. To stop the unnecessary repetition of code, we will be using flags. With the help of these flags, we can then decide whether the teacher is in the class or not. The students are informed or not, which students are absent. The flag that we used for the teacher is teacher flag of the type integer. The S flag 1, S flag 2 and S flag 3 are of the type integer and will be used for the student 1, 2 and 3 respectively. And similarly all the other flags. Dim counter as integer, this will be used for storing the seconds. 
then starts a form load function we set the minutes equal to zero timer 3 is set to false and all the flags are initially set to zero and also the counter is set to zero then we set the communication port with MSCOM1 dot com port is equal to 3 this is the port number on which the Arduino Omega is installed dot settings is equal to 9600 in 8 and 1 9600 is the baud rate I have already explained this code in my previous tutorials and at the end to make sure that you set the dot port open to true then starts a timer 1 the timer 1 is used to check the communication port every one second whether the data is received from the controller or not txt receive.txt is equal to mscom1.input this instruction is used to read the serial port and the data is displayed in txt receive.txt search is equal to txt receive.txt the data from the txt dot text is stored in the search then we use if conditions to check which command is received if in string search teacher and teacher flag equals zero then when the teacher will swipe the card the word teacher will be sent to the computer in string is a built-in function and is used for searching a particular substring so this uh, instruction means that if the application has received the word a teacher and the teacher flag is zero then check three dot values equal to one mark the teacher present timer 3 is enabled so that we set it to true teacher flag is equal to 1 we change the state of the teacher flag from 0 to 1 this way we can stop the unnecessary repetition of code timer 4 dot enabled is equal to true and then end if now these conditions will be used to check which students are present after the teacher swipes a card the students are given six minutes if within six minutes the, the students swipe their cards they will be marked present all the conditions are exactly the same except the search string and flag Then starts a timer 2 function which is used to display the current system time on label 5. So label 5 dot caption is equal to time. The timer 3 is used to keep track of the seconds and minutes. So seconds is equal to seconds plus 1. Label 7 dot caption is equal to seconds. If seconds greater than 59 then seconds is equal to 0 and minutes is equal to minutes plus 1 and label 3 dot caption is equal to minutes and then end if the timer 4 is used for sending messages to students to let them know that a teacher has arrived in the controller program each and every student will have its own message sending function in which his number will be specified so counter is equal to counter plus one label 3 dot caption is equal to counter if teacher flag equals 1 and the counter is greater than 10 and counter is less than 20 and check 8 dot value is equal to 0 then this condition means that if the teacher is already present in a class and the seconds are between 10 and 20 and the check box 8 is not yet checked then what to do is simply mark the check box 8 which means send a message to student number 1 and similarly for other students check a to dot value is equal to 1 send message to student number 1 and then the F condition ends while the rest of the programming simply consists of conditions which checks the boxes and the flags and sends the desired commands to the controller depending on these commands the messages are sent to students and parents if check a dot value is equal to 1 and flag 1 is equal to 0 then we simply send a command a to the controller which means that send a message to student number 1 that the teacher has arrived and then we change the, the state of the flag from 0 to 1 so that this uh, function or this condition will not be executed again and similarly for the others 
So now the application programming is completed. Now let's connect the Arduino and make sure the right board and right COM port is selected. Then click on the upload button and wait for a while. As you can see the program is uploaded. Now let's connect a 5 volt adapter with JSM module. As you can see the LED is blinking fast, it means that it's not connected with the network now. The LED is blinking at a slow rate which means that now it's connected with the network. So now let's open the application. This is the teacher's RFID card. As you can see the checkbox is checked and the timer has started. Now messages will be sent to all the students. Currently I'm using two cell phones. The cell phone on the right side presents a student number one while the cell phone on the left side presents a student number one parents. As you can see student number one received a message that for the teacher has arrived. This code is for student number one and let's say student number one is absent while the other two students are present. Now we will wait for some time. When the time is completed, a message will be sent to the parents of student number one. I hope you liked today's episode, like and share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.